Hello, greetings. Uh, I found this hadith where in Sahih Bukhari where Prophet Muhammad's name is given as Ibn Abi Kapsha. Kapsha. This is when uh, uh, Abu Sufyan and all, uh, they were called to question who, so Her Heraclius, the ruler of Byzantine, asked Abu Sufyan, then, I mean, who was the closest to Prophet Muhammad? Abu Sufyan said he was the closest relative. I guess he was there at that time. So here, this is the Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, sahih-bukhari.com. And you will find it in sunnah.com. So, um... Uh, the name of Muhammad. Uh, here it is. I told my companions that the question of Ibn Abi Kapsha, the Prophet Muhammad, in brackets, has become so prominent that even the king of Bani al Asfar, Byzantine or Byzantine, is afraid of him, afraid of him. Then I started to become sure that he, the prophet, would be the conqueror in the near future till I embraced Islam, i.e. Allah guided me to it. Ah, the sub-narrator adds, Ibn An-Natur was the governor of Ilya, Jerusalem, and Herak Heraclius was the head of the Christians of Sham. Ibn An-Natur narrates that once while Heraclius was visiting Ilya, Jerusalem, he got up in the morning with a sad mood. Some of his priests asked him why he was in that mood. Heraclius was a foreteller and an astrologer. He, rep he replied, at night when I looked at the stars, I saw that the leader of those who practice circumcision had appeared, become the conqueror, in brackets. Who are, uh, who are they who practice circumcision? The people replied, except the Jews, nobody practices circumcision. Meaning now this uh, Muhammad has come, Ibn Abi Kapsha. So this, uh, I had to first go through Christian prints and all, then I start to check. So check the hadiths they have given. You can do the same about the uh, name of uh, Muhammad. Volume 1, it's in Volume 1, Book 1. Number six, narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas. Okay, so what happens is, I go here because this is the site I used to look up, uh, reading, um, then I was guided, books by Samawi, Dejani. And uh, then what you do is you go, you click here on the book of the Revelations first one. See? on revelations sorry I have to if you can't see this and okay so you click here and you get all the hadiths on revelations very easy Friday prayers and this is the one I did my research on the Sahih so I'm used to this that's why uh, not from sunnah.com, but this one, uh, sahih-bukhari.com, sahih So here, uh, back to this, right? Uh, I have to check these hadiths for my own references, my own research. Sorry. So this is it, Heraclus. Her Sorry, Heraclius, Heraclius, Abu Sufyan, and Heraclius, 
narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas, get it? Abu Sufyan bin Harb informed me that Heraclius had sent a messenger to him while he had been accompanying a caravan from Quraysh. They were merchants doing business in Sham. Because uh, Heraclius was sent a letter by this prophet. Claims to be a prophet. Uh, so this uh, he's, Heraclius started to question Abu Sufyan. Oh, so there's good things about uh, this prophet. Yes, 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 he good, this, that. But even Heraclius became afraid of him. He, like uh, the, uh, the letter sent. See, Heraclius then asked for the letter addressed by Allah's apostle, which was delivered by Diya to the governor of Basra, who forwarded it to Heraclius to read. Contents of the letter were as follows. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. This letter is from Muhammad, the slave of Allah, and his apostle to Heraclius, the ruler of Byzantine, or Byzantine. Peace be upon him who follows the right path. Furthermore, I invite you to Islam. If you become a Muslim, you will be safe. Meaning, from the fire of hell hereafter, what? Punishment of the hereafter. And Allah will double, double your reward. And if you reject, this is like bribery. And if you reject this invitation of Islam, you will be committing a sin by misguiding your Arisian peasants, meaning peasants. And I recite to you Allah's statement, O people of the scripture, come to a word common to you and us that we worship none, other, uh, none but Allah, and that we associate nothing in Worship with him, and that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. This is very important. Then if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims, those who have surrendered to Allah. Surah 3 of the Quran, verse 64. Abu Sufyan then added, when Heraclitus, Her Heraclius had finished his speech. So, you know this uh, none uh, besides Allah. Take no other lords besides Allah. This is also very important. I want to show you. And uh, remember this. What is his real name? See, I told the companions that the question of Ibn Abi Kapsha, Kapsha, the Prophet Muhammad has become pro so prominent that even the king of Bani al-Aswar, Byzantine, is afraid of him. But here now you take no, take no lords besides Allah. Shall take others, none of us, okay? So this is in, written in uh, chapter 3 of uh, the Quran, verse 64. So, I will show you something. Take, take the. Uh, so that this is why we got confused. Uh, many other hadiths like this, even in our Shia narrations and uh, sources given to us by our imams. So, when we used to read this verse, right? Take, take not. Okay, here is the, from Surah Tawbah, verse 31. It's, uh, there are mistranslations, because of course the translators of the Quran could not understand. So they, 
but word to word uh, they have taken their scholars and monks as lords besides Allah and also the Messiah the son of Mary see so the you can take the Messiah son of Mary as a Lord but not the scholars and monks as lords in this verse uh, they they take the rabbis and the monks for their lords apart from Allah so then they decided to put a comma here and also the Messiah comma this means son of Mary this means that we didn't get it right Surah 9 ayah 31 in the Quran this means that you can take as Lord, see, word by word. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as Lords, Arbaban. Mean besides, see. Besides Allah, besides whom? Allah. And the Messiah. Ibn Maryama. This is what's important here. You see, but this translator put it because, of course. He thought, he's jumped to the assumption, no, no, no way, because there's another ayat now, which I just uh, read uh, from the hadith, right? In Surah 3, that you should not take anyone as your lords besides Allah. And Muhammad is the slave of Allah, but that uh, particular verse, that we're not supposed to take anyone. other than Allah or besides Allah as our lords but they have taken to themselves as lords apart from Allah their doctors and their monks and al masi actually it should be put like this in the Quran verse son of Maryam the rest is not except one uh, so nothing no it doesn't correct itself about the rest, I can read the full ayat, but you can also read it. Surah Tawbah, verse 31. So you can go there, uh, you can check online, uh, check on Google search. If you have the Quran at home, you can check there. Your Quran, in the Quran, oh my God. So you see, this, per this translator of the Quran has... This is the way it should be. But the Quran doesn't say that. And when I was reading my Quran, when I had that Quran at home, I, uh, the, the translation was like this, uh, the other one, the one previous one. They, uh, they have taken their scholars and monks as those besides Allah and also the Messiah. So they tried to like... Uh, and also the Messiah meaning, uh, this is uh, bad, I mean, if you don't put commas there, then this thing changes, you see, so they've tried to put commas, and if this uh, translation in Arabic, I don't know how, whether it should have commas or not, but it clearly, for me here, not knowing Arabic properly how written in written form how you should take it they have taken see it should have been they have taken their rabbis and their monks and they have taken their rabbis their monks and Masih Ibn Maryam 
as their Lord, as lords. Besides, Allah. But no, it's not put like this in the Quran. Ayat here. 31, verse 31. Allah and the Messiah wal Masiha Ibn Maryam, son of Maryam. This means that you can take, if you don't put these commas here, here. But here the translation, again, is uh, wrong. See, try, they tried, Dr. Ghali tried to correct it. They have taken to themselves as lords apart from Allah, their doctors and their monks and Al-Masih, the son of Maryam. And in no way were they commanded to worship anyone except one God. There is no God except He. All extolment be to Him. He is above whatever they associate with Him. But the word-to-word -word translation, like proper or Allah and so this is proper translation of that ayat they uh, by Tahim uh, Al-Quran Abu Allah Ala Madudi they take the rabbis and the monks for their lords apart from Allah and also the Messiah son of Mary so there has to be they put a comma here because they've assumed that Messiah should not be taken as Lord because of another ayat and so many others. Ayats in the Quran. So they try to correct this ayat and this ayat is not put properly by God, Allah. In Surah Tawbah, verse, I mean it's verse 31. Oh, Sahih International, they have taken their scholars and monks as lords besides Allah, comma, and also the Messiah, the son of Maria, Mary, and they were not commanded except to worship one God. There is no deity except him. Exalted is he above whatever they associate with him. Okay, so I've said the whole verse. But what is important is this part. Um, Al Masih Ibn Maryam is not put where the scholars and the monks are mentioned in this verse, but after besides Allah and this Masih means you should shouldn't shouldn't you take it to mean that you can take Al Masih Ibn Maryam as Lord, right? Then we go back. So Sunni sources. <clears throat> that, uh, but here in the Sunni source, it, it clearly says, uh, and it even uh, has the reference to this, uh, the the letter has the reference to this ayat in the Quran, which is given there in the Book of Revelation, Sahih International. Uh, oh, sorry, Sahih. Uh, what am I saying? Sahih International. Sahih Bukhari. Oh, goodness. Uh, so, okay, back here. And uh, where is it? Uh, just looking, searching. Here. Uh, uh, oh, people. No, wait a minute. And I recite to you Allah's statement. So this, con this letter consists of the verse from the Quran. O people of the scripture, come to a word common to you and us that we worship none but Allah and that we associate nothing in worship with him. Except that we should add, obey Allah and obey Allah's messenger. There are many ayats like that. 
And then I will also come to an ayat where Muhammad is to be worshipped equal with God. There's an ayat in the Quran, I haven't yet gotten to that, right? But I will show you how, as uh, Rob Christian pointed out in one of his videos about this, worshipping Muhammad, he's equal, on equal footings with Allah. And I will check that properly, sit down, contemplate, check, and uh, then I will come back on that, right? But for now, this, O oh people of the scriptures, okay, and uh, uh, that we worship none, let's come to a common word to you and us, that we worship none but Allah. Sorry, I had to put my own words here. And that we associate nothing in worship with them. What? Yes, nothing in worship with him, and that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. Then, if they turn away, say, bear witness. Okay. Surah 3 of the Quran, Ayat 64. Saying this right. Surah 3, Ayat 64. What? And that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. And that none of us shall take others. Sorry, this was a message. Uh, none of us should. And that none of us shall take others as lords besides Allah. So, hmm. Surah Tawbah, Ayat 31 doesn't say that. Not really. We can take uh, Masi, but there's a mistranslation of it by the translators of the Quran. And so, who is this Ibn Abi Kapsha? So, we were turned out of the court. I told my companions that the question of Ibn Abi Kapsha, the Prophet Muhammad, has become so prominent that the Prophet Muhammad, I told my companions that the question of Ibn Abi Kapsha, this is uh, Abu Sufyan saying, right? Or someone else, but. Ibn An so it's so uh, confusing here, yeah, I'll have to, no, no, but this, please look, Sunnis, check, the real true name, Ibn, Ibn Abi Kapsha, Ibn Abi Kapsha, meaning son of Abi Kapsha, son of Abi Kapsha, Meaning, his father is not Abdullah, or Abdullah was the title, Abi Kapsha, of uh, the father, Ibn Abi, Ibn Abi Kapsha. So I have to take these uh, Sunni sources very seriously now, since I realize that I have to see the other side also and listen and do research now. And uh, I will be uh, again going through the videos like I did for many, many, I mean, some years now on YouTube here. And then about Prophet Muhammad by ex-Muslims and all. Then I'll do my own checking. Then now this has started. So I didn't have the heart really to go back to these sources. And uh, even sometimes the Quran is very, very painful for me. Um, certain in my condition also so I have to see that I don't get too emotional and hurt so and for you know my health uh, I take care of uh, myself but no there's no taking care time is running out on me uh, so I have to 
in pain or whatever, disgusted. Have to check these hadiths again and see. I think definitely uh, the foreigners, westerners are right when they say <coughs> that it wasn't a uh, long time ago. I was told, like, uh, you know, they used to say that, uh, and I even read that it's not uh, in good taste for Muhammad to be marrying so many widows and all this and saying, you know, that he's helping them. So, but our, our ulamas, our shias even would say that, no, the Westerners want to malign the Prophet and they don't understand or they don't understand Prophet Muhammad because since, you know, in the Christianity, Jesus Christ didn't get married and all this or something else, uh, some other reasons they give that they have misunderstood the Prophet. But uh, it would, we at least have a limit, or you know, we. Uh, but the prophet exception to prophet because he was the leader then, and he had to marry these poor, freak, uh, shrieking, screaming, grieved captives, widows of those uh, he had killed. His the soldiers had he he killed he killed. But, uh, I just, sorry, yeah, he killed. Uh, but uh, he he never uh, hardly went in war and uh, fought himself. Always sending Ali, Ali, we were told she asked, front, front line. When love's a battle, I'll be on the front line. Tom Kimmel's song. So what a love, huh? Ali and Muhammad, and Muhammad and Ali. And what was it that I was going to, the point I was going to finish here is that <coughs> we kill these widows. So, oh, there are exceptions for Muslims too. I, Not only Rasulullah, in the Quran, uh, you are forbidden to marry married women except for those your right hands possess. This is not, sorry, I forgot to mention this, that it's not only... <coughs> for Rasulullah, but it's, it, it's also for the Muslims, this ayat in Surah Nisa. I keep forgetting the ayat number, sorry, 23 or something. Sorry, um, yeah, so in Surah Nisa, except for those whom your right hands possess or the captives in war. So, and that you see that they are Muslims and Chased. What is the criteria here? Just let me check again, please. Yeah, sorry, here it is. Uh, sorry, uh, verse 24 of Surah Nisa. And also prohibited to you are all married women, except those your right hands possess. <coughs> this is the decree of Allah upon you. And lawful to you are all others beyond these, provided that you seek them in marriage. So many brackets. Provided that you seek them in marriage. With gifts from your property, desiring chastity, not unlawful sexual intercourse. Hooray, Muhammad is so, ooh, subhanAllah. Not unlawful sexual intercourse. So for whatever you enjoy of marriage, this is like, a, this is really like the top, you know, it's like, oh, oh very good cream. Uh, you know, yeah, it's like plastered wall, you know. Yeah, but the wall is, uh, inside it's all Hollow, kokla. You know what I mean? <sighs> Putting this, this part, right? Honest wedlock, not debauchery, and those of whom you see content by marrying them, give unto them the portions as a duty, and there is no sin for you in what you do by mutual agreement. After 
mutual agreement. After the duty hath been done, lo, Allah is ever knowing wise. <coughs> Let me see just another translation. Yusuf Ali, except for these, all others are lawful, provided you seek them in marriage. Wait a minute. Also prohibited are women, Yusuf Ali, translation. Also prohibited are women already married, except, 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 those whom your right hands possess. Semicolon. Thus hath Allah ordained prohibitions against you. Semicolon. No, no, sorry, colon, colon. Thus, no, sorry, possess. Colon, thus Allah, thus hath Allah ordained prohibitions against you. Please check for yourself now. I'm making these mistakes I make instead of colon. Except for these, except for these, all others are lawful. I will need Dr. David Wood to explain to me. It, oh, except for these. All others are lawful, provided you seek them in marriage. Duh. Except those whom your right hands possess. Thus hath Allah ordained prohibitions. Oh my God. This is like some, you know, Shakespeare. Uh, no, no, th this is worse. This is like, you know, classic. This Quran Arabic. Okay, now I'm really gone case for now. So I'll take a break. Except, so, uh, I wish I could. No, this is my jihad. Akbar. Uh, finding the answer. <laughs> okay, I think I'll, I'll take a break and continue. No, I can't go on. <laughs>